On July 27, 2006, hearings were held before the Congressional Committee on Energy and Commerce to investigate research into global warming and climate change, specifically the accuracy of temperature reconstructions by Dr. Michael Mann and his team, also known as the hockey stick graph. Here is Dr. Mann's testimony, which, although the subject of many opinions, critiques, slanders, and slurs, has rarely been actually seen and heard. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you very much. Uh, all of you are now under oath, and uh, Dr. Mann will recognize you for five minutes for your opening statement. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for inviting me here uh, to appear before you today. I became a climate scientist because the Earth's climate is a fascinating and complex system, and understanding how it works is so important. Part of my research has involved examining pre-industrial climate history in order to learn about the natural variations in the Earth's climate. My research in this field, not just the initial work my colleagues and I published in the, li in, in the uh, late 1990s, but my recent research as well, suggests late 20th century northern hemisphere average temperatures are unprecedented over at least the past 1,000 years. Of course, we have accurate thermometer measurements only back about 100 years. And so we estimate climate prior to that period from indirect sources called climate proxies, such as tree rings, corals, and ice cores. This work involves many uncertainties, and there are numerous judgment calls that must be made. For that reason, we are rarely categorical in the conclusions that we reach. What is important, however, is that the scientific community has reached consensus that recent northern hemisphere average warmth appears to be unprecedented over at least the past 1,000 years, and that this warmth can only be explained by anthropogenic or human influences on the climate. This conclusion is not based on single studies or isolated research, but is confirmed by many studies using different sets of data and independent statistical methods. And indeed, this conclusion was just echoed weeks ago by a report of the National Academy of Sciences, the most prestigious nonpartisan scientific body in the nation. So where does my research fit into this? Taken as a whole, my own research is in accord with the scientific mainstream reflected in the National Academy report and elsewhere that there has been unprecedented, unprecedented warming in the Northern Hemisphere over the past 100 years. Now, if uh, Exhibit A, if you can take a look at Exhibit A there, that shows that this conclusion is uh, common to a number of similar studies, including two I was involved with. But this committee is not looking at my work on the whole or on the larger body of science on this issue. It is instead focusing on the first study of this type my colleagues and I published and undertook in 1996 while I was still a graduate student. While there were previous reconstructions based on proxy data, our study was the first to estimate global patterns of past temperature change and the first to estimate uncertainties. Our initial study published in the journal Nature in 1998 was followed by an additional study in the journal Geophysical Research Letters in 1999. The main conclusion of the 1998 study was that there had been unprecedented warming in the Northern Hemisphere in recent decades. The 1999 study reinforced this conclusion, but also reassessed and expanded the uncertainties and added the tentative conclusion that it was likely that the 1990s were the warmest decade over that thousand year time period and that 1998 was the warmest year. And the 1999 study included a graphic depiction of the temperature history over the last millennium, which demonstrated an unprecedented rise during the 20th century. Some have dubbed this graphic the hockey stick. Now, if the question this committee seeks to answer is whether knowing what I know today, a decade after starting the original study, my colleagues and I would conduct it in exactly the same way, the answer is plainly no. The field of paleoclimate reconstruction has evolved tremendously over the past decade. Important new proxy data have been developed. Reconstructions have been compared with independent estimates from climate model simulations and confirmed by those simulations. Statistical methods for reconstructing climate from proxy data have been refined and rigorously tested. And I have been uh, actively working in each of these areas. This is important because although the focus of criticism on our work in the late 1990s has been on the statistical conventions we used, my co-authors and I have not used those conventions in our later work. The critique goes only to our first reconstruction effort. It does not apply to our more recent studies, all of which indicate the same basic hockey stick result. Exhibit B demonstrates this point. 
uh, the green uh, uh, reconstruction does not use principal component analysis at all. So the statistical conventions being discussed here uh, have no relevance. And it's the same basic reconstruction, if you will, essentially the same quote unquote hockey stick. Now, our critics do not confront the fact that our basic conclusion is not an isolated or aberrational finding reached only in one study. Every climate scientist who has performed a detailed reconstruction of the climate of the past 1,000 years using different proxy data in different statistical methods has come up with the same basic hockey stick pattern. That is to say, a reconstruction that agrees with our original reconstruction within its estimated uncertainties. My critics also fail to recognize that even if their criticisms are accepted, it has no bearing on the outcome. Dr. Wegman's report argues that the hockey stick pattern derives from the statistical conventions used in our 1998-1999 studies. However, using alternative statistical conventions yields the same hockey stick pattern. The hockey stick pattern is intrinsic to the data. That was the conclusion of the National Academy. Page 116 of the National Academy report says, the statistical convention my colleagues and I used, quote, does not appear to unduly influence reconstructions of hemispheric mean temperature. Reconstructions performed without using principal component analysis are qualitatively similar to the original curves presented by Mann et al., end quote. This was also the conclusion reached by Dr. Hans von Stork, who testified here last week, and by four independent teams of scientists who published peer-reviewed articles considering and rejecting the conclusion that the statistical methods used in our early studies were responsible for the hockey stick result. Finally, my critics ignore the fact that other scientists have repeated our original results using the centered PCA analysis that Dr. Wegman favors and have concluded that the result is basically the same as we originally reported. This is summarized in Exhibit C. So even if one accepts as valid the criticisms about the statistical conventions used in our early work, our results are essentially unaffected. As you can see, the two curves are barely distinguishable uh, within the width of the, uh, the lines that are shown. And as I have said before, our key conclusion that recent hemispheric warmth appears unprecedented over at least the past millennium has been confirmed by every study that has examined the same question. Finally, it is worth stressing again that paleoclimate reconstructions represent just one of many independent lines of evidence that support the conclusion that human activity is already having a substantial impact on global climate.